Thanks for joining us for part two of this bonus podcast. It's Natalie Bongiolo with Tim Clark and Alison Fan. And we're going to outline the, really the prosecution case. So I guess let's start by, Tim, if you can tell us, why does the prosecution say Bradley Edwards is the man responsible for the murders of Sarah Spears, Jane Rimmer and Kira Glennon? Yeah, well, that's a, um, a multi-layered answer. <laughs> they say they've got um, a huge amount of evidence against him. Um, uh, they've got circumstantial evidence. They've got um, forensic evidence in the in the way of DNA and fibres. Um, they've got um, witnesses that say they think they they saw a person very much like him prowling around Claremont um, in a, in a car trying to pick up lone women. Um, they're even going to use some st- homicide statistical evidence to show that these three murders were in a pocket of their own um, and so only one person could have done them. Um, there's a motive that they're trying to um, sort of lay on top of all those um, layers of actual evidence and they say it's an emotional upset mm. motive um, and they, that they're going to drag that back to the Hollywood Hospital incident in 1990. Um, at that time, when Mr. Edwards was sentenced for that, uh, only a week after he'd actually committed the offence, in that week, there were two reports. He spoke to two psychologists um, and reports written about him to give to the magistrate as part of his sentencing exercise. And in those reports, um, Mr. Edwards was asked why he'd done what he'd done. Why, why, why did he grab this woman that you'd never met before while you're at work and try to drag her into this toilet cubicle? And Mr. Edwards explained that he'd had uh, an uh, argument with his with his then girlfriend the night before, and he was still hugely upset by it. It, it, it was an argument that that related to a, a previous infidelity of on her part, and it also uh, revolved around her wanting to get married and putting him under pressure to do so. And he said he just he he, he couldn't handle it. He went to work, um, uh, still upset. Then work hadn't gone well. And it all built up inside him, and that's what had basically something had snapped, and and that's what had made him do what he'd done. So this is emotional upset one. Yes, yes. Well, actually, no. No. So what, emotional upset upset one would would take him back to Huntingdale, Huntingdale. but we haven't really been given a, 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 a an emotional spike, if you like, mm-hmm. um, for that. Which I'll go on. Well, we'll discuss later on in terms of how the, the defence say this this plays out. But that's where the genesis of this idea comes from, these reports. And without these reports, particularly what Mr. Edwards says in them, this wouldn't be a thing at all. This wouldn't be a motive at all. Um, So drawing out from that, the prosecution say, well, if you then you look forward to the certain times of um, other crimes that he has committed and we say he's committed, i.e. the rape and the three murders, there were other emotional spikes in his t- in his private life at this time which correlate to these incidents. And that's why we say when Mr. Edwards gets into an emotional funk, he, 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 something happens in his private life to spark him, that's when he goes out and does them. And then they will say and notice when these crimes stopped. April the 3rd, 1997, mm-hmm. when did he meet, when did Mr. Edwards meet his second wife? April the 1st, 1997. And so that's where they point, why do they stop? Because Mr. Edwards had met his second wife and, he, and, and from then right up until his arrest, he was basically emotionally settled. He was in a fulfilling right. relationship with a stepdaughter who, who, who he obviously cared about and, and that, that's the reason why he hasn't gone on to do more of these crimes that we we allege that he's done in the past. And I know we've heard a lot about how Bradley Edwards is an ordinary guy. He's an everyday guy. Um, Nothing unusual about him. But I think what was interesting with the testimonies um, relating to the Hollywood um, hospital victim was that in that psych report, we did hear this um, in, in his report, there was that he he did have a bad temper or he admitted to having a bad temper and having to suppress his anger and control his emotions. Yeah, and this is one of the most interesting things that's, that, that I've taken from the first four weeks, and I don't know if you agree with me, Ali, is the different faces of Mr. Edwards, the different facets of him, the different sides of him. The We've w- certainly heard a lot about that. Yeah. Yes. Completely different yeah. yes. character. On the one mm. hand... Um, Placid, even-tempered. 
unassuming, yep. not a heavy drinker, yep. not too excited about much of anything, yep. um, bit of a computer nerd. Yep. Stayed and at then home. Stayed at home. Um, was a bit of a night owl. Bit of a w- strong worker, according to his colleagues. Yes, Did yes. everything he was asked to do. Yeah. 30 years in one company. Exactly. exactly. Mm. Yeah. And so there's that side of Mr Edwards. But the then pro- we hear about the cross-dresser and the, his beginnings. If we didn't know any of that, um, it would be quite a different way we'd be looking at this. Yeah. But we do know about his um, sexual deviancies, I guess, being a sexual monster. I mean, that rape was yeah. horrific. And the earlier and stuff the with the kimono, yeah. uh, the wearing the white nighty, um, all of these strange things that he has been. But And, of course, he has pleaded guilty to those. But whether, and the prosecution is saying, okay, that's building up to him becoming a, a serial killer, whether you can make that conclusion as we've, we've got to yet to be seen. Well, that's, I mean, that's the, that's the $64 million question, because whether others, they can prove that someone who has admitted to particularly bad crimes, but they're not as bad as what he's been alleged to have done. And, and wh- whether that jump is, it, you can make that evidentiary jump and, and, and make that conclusion that, yes, it must be the same man based on, um, you know, cross-dressing, um, you know. A, well, see, a lot of the stuff was knocked out, wasn't it, when they were also mm-hmm. trying to introduce... Um, what was on his computer, mm. uh, things that happened when he's a teenager, was he near an underwear yes. drawer, this sort of stuff. That's a fairly mm, vague way to... Yeah. yeah, and so that was evidence that yeah. was wanting to be brought by the prosecution, um, particularly about sexual peccadilloes and particularly about violent pornography that the police found in his at his house after he was arrested. The, the, the uh, prosecution wanted to bring all that in to show that he had a propensity to, for, you know, and an and a obsession. And then they said um, for violent sex and yeah. rape and all the rest of it. Um, but the judge said, um, just because it's on his computer and just because you, you say it's connected, I don't accept it is and I'm not going to consider it. So yeah. that's all out. Now, we know it exists, but uh, as far as Justice Hall is con- will um, be considering down the track, it he doesn't. May not accept it doesn't it. He may not accept it. He no. may not accept it at all because, see, I mean, there are a lot of people out there with weird stuff on their computers. In fact, we don't <laughs> even know what um, some of those one-liners where the, the second wife feared for her life and neither side would take it up. Mm. They didn't want to hear the answer. They didn't want to hear that it was something like, oh, maybe he had weird stuff on his computer and that's why I feared for my life. And the, and the other one didn't want to know in case it was something worse. So you yeah. never, they never went anywhere. They made great headlines for us, but yeah. we just didn't know what they actually meant. Yeah. Yes. And then, so, so that's, that's, that's the motive. Yes. Uh, or the, the, that's the, the alleged motive. The posit- motive. Yeah. But... Um, what we don't know is whether that's even going to be considered by Justice Hall as well. So yes. uh, we've just mentioned all the pornography and all that type of stuff. That's out uh, I suspect already. that he will be waiting and watching very closely the the thing that's, the stuff that's coming out next year. Because yes. even if we didn't know any of that background, Tim, we'd be looking at a bit of scants too. I mean, if you didn't know any of the um, background, which a jury would not have been told... Mm. And you're just looking at... He hasn't actually been identified at being at any of these places in Claremont. Not one person can say, yes, that was him. And we've been asked, why don't they point to him now and recognise him? Well, he... I don't know if you could recognise at a nightclub after having 20 middies whether you could identify someone. You know, this is it. And they've also... There's also been a lot of questions. um, You know, are they showing a photograph of Bradley Edwards... 25 years ago and asking anybody to identify that photograph. All these identity kits that they've provided, they're so different. Well, there has been a lot of questions about that and the short answer is no. No. Um, Because, uh, I mean, it would open up a whole can of worms. Basically, uh, I'll take some of the blame for this, because Mr Edwards' photo has Mm. been on the front of our newspaper probably 50 times in the last Mm. three years. Mm. Now, I I mean, I'll let the listeners into a, a bit of a trade secret we've got a we've got an in-house lawyer here um who legals all our copy before it goes out because we don't want to get sued and i don't want to go to prison um we had a, quite an extensive editorial um tete-a-tete with our lawyer about whether we should run pictures of mr edwards at all before the trial even though it was not a jury trial mm. because uh, you could influence a witness exactly yeah. exactly and that was the argument and so we didn't the West Australian actually didn't run pictures of Mr. Edwards for a long, long time. We ran sketches of him, yes. which were a fair and accurate report of the a hearing, but we didn't run 
um, photos of any photos of Mr. Edwards for a long time, and we certainly didn't run photos of Mr. Edwards circa 1995, 1996, right. or 1997 for exactly the reason that mm. Ali said. Because, in our lawyer's opinion, um, that could influence a witness and when identity is a, the key well one of the key aspects yes. of this i didn't do it it wasn't me um that and, and you're asking witnesses to remember many many years ago um something they saw fleetingly in the dark after a few beers um our lawyer's opinion was to sh to to um, consistently put a, an image from that time of him up might influence witnesses um so and so that's w why we didn't um, run them up until basically uh, very close to when the trial started. And of course this is what the Defence um, Counsel Pujovic has pointed out with several of the witnesses that yes. um, why didn't you mention Telstra or why didn't you mention something back then? back then and one of them at least one of them has said well I, I ha may have been influenced but what I've read in the paper what or, or what I've or... seen and, and, and you can't blame people for that sometimes they're trying to help one of them actually said one of the witnesses said oh I'm trying to help well hmm yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm doing my best to help you yeah. help her yeah. yeah to the prosecutor because, <laughs> yeah okay well if we move along the timeline um with uh, the Karakata rape, which was in 1995, mm -hmm. is there an emotional upset that uh, matches that period of time? Yeah, so there was, well, there was um, or there, there was earlier um, pointed out by Prosecutor Carmel Barbagal, it was around that time that um, another man moved into the Edwards marital home. Um, we've called, we've referred to him as the third wheel, or uh, you know, the third point of the love triangle. It, this was a man that Mr. Ed was his first wife had met while she was at work, and they'd become friendly. At this time, the manager was going through some issues. Mr. Ed was on his computer all the time, as per the first wife's evidence. She wasn't, he wasn't paying her enough attention. She was getting her attention from somewhere, someone else, and eventually that man moved into the house um, at her behest. Basically, she said you know, come and live with us, we've got a spare room. And he did. Um, and it was around about that time, so January 1995, that that happened. And then February 12, 1995 is when the rape happened. OK, and of course, we know that that the wife um, at that period of time is actually the girlfriend who he'd had the uh, argument with back in 1990. When he was being pressured to get when married. When he was being yeah. pressured to get yeah. married. Yeah, exactly. So they did go yeah. on to get married. And then this has happened five years down the mm -hmm. track um, when the marriage is starting to break down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so moving forward to 1996, is there an emotional upset that coincides with the disappearance of Sarah Spears? Well, prosecution claim it is. Um, and it's it was Sarah's disappearance was on a very memorable day Australia in Australia, day. Australia Day, January the 26th. Um, and that, what was that? It was just a bit of a glitch that the wife didn't want to go and see the fireworks with him, so yeah. he goes out and... So yeah. uh, at the yeah. time, the wife had basically, the first wife was a girlfriend, had moved out of the home, was living away, living with her parents um, south of Perth. And what the prosecutors say is Mr. Edwards went down to see her. It was quite civil. He stayed for dinner. Um, but then... Uh, he asked her, do you want to go to a fireworks display, which um, Australia Day is, is very often celebrated with fireworks displays all, all over all over the state, all over the country. Um, but she said no. She said she didn't want to go. And the prosecutors say Mr. Edwards from then got in his car, drove back to Perth, drove straight into Claremont um, and managed to pick up Sarah and did, mm. did whatever. Mm. Now, with the um, testimony, though, of this of the wife, uh, she actually threw some doubt on on that, didn't she? She did. She was she was she painted him as being sort of uh, quite again um, not really reactive to anything much had happened. Even when she was having the affair, she was saying, "Oh, he doesn't really mind." She was the one that was having the you know having the sex with her with the border yes. with him next door. I oh, know everything's fine. He's cool. Um, she was not a very helpful prosecution witness. No, she was pretty vague. Yeah. Um, and, and she couldn't recall which fireworks it was, Correct. could she? Yeah. And um, they'd had dinner at a parent's place yeah, that night? Right. And yeah, then he, So she yeah. remembered that, um, but she couldn't really remember even what fireworks she'd been invited to. Um, and look, once again, we've said it so many times. It's, it's, a, it's a long, long time ago, and remembering details. Um, and this, this fireworks 
um, sort of uh, theory as to Sarah's disappearance that uh, that was only revealed quite late in the piece in terms of um, over the three years between um, charge and, and trial and we hadn't heard that um, and we think that it's maybe have, has come out of some what they call proofing so you, you the prosecutors would interview witnesses before they actually give their um, evidence in court to s- sort of check mm. what the details might be and what we think's happened is that she she might have remembered this fireworks um, uh, incident or event um, quite late on while she was being proofed um, but and and once again, the defence has argued, well, this is much too vague. And and, mm. and how could how could this is the defence's argument? How could something apparently so bland as to, as to just be not sort wanting of to go to the fireworks? Yeah, um, yeah. Trigger such an emotional um, turmoil that Mr. Edwards would go on and and, and commit a murder. Is uh, apparently is allegedly his first murder. So so that's the defence's side of it. Um, yes. And 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 they also want to. Throw stones at the at the next two um, sort of supposed emotional spikes to come as well. So the next emotional spike um, would be uh, with Jane Rimmer's disappearance. And what does the prosecution say that caused that emotional spike? Well, this I mean, this you would imagine would possibly engender um, a, a very um, emotional response. This is. Um, just a couple of days before, or a couple of weeks, in the, around the week or two of Jane's disappearance, um, Mr. Edwards' his wife has, has by this time moved out. He's, she's living with the lover, and he, she basically rings Mr. Edwards up and tells him that she's pregnant mm-hmm. with um, the lover's baby. Um, and this, um, and, and this is basically said to trigger him again. And uh, but again, in her evidence, Ali, she was quite vague, wasn't yes. she? About yeah, dates. Yeah, exactly. She didn't remember where she'd gone to, when she got pregnant. She didn't remember no. the, the clinic or hospital she went to. And it's to me that was very odd because most women would remember yeah, yeah. where they where they but <laughs> you do with pregnant. But you did hear later. Um, you saw the statements from uh, Medicare, I believe, which showed when she had gone for an ultrasound. Um, yeah, yeah, so those, those were tended as evidence, yes. Medicare records, to show the, 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 the dates. The dates were consistent with... The um, dates were consistent. Were, ...were matching the Jane Rimmer. But that's the prosecution's dates are matching up, yeah, when, when it happened. So we but, knew that it did happen at the time, but she But didn't. we don't categorically know when he found out, though. And that's no, and yeah. according to her, then none of the reactions were very over the top. It was yeah. just sort of, yeah, mm. okay, ho hum. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> we know it was after a, a certain time that she'd been confirmed as pregnant, um, and she recalled it was quite soon after that. But again, um, exact dates, we haven't got them, and we're not going to no. get them. So um, the the final relationship breakdown, I guess, of this marriage was um, several months later which prosecutions say coincides with the disappearance of Kira Glennon. Yes, yeah, so we know the, the wife is out of the marital home. Mr Edwards is, is home alone for that period of time. And then March 97, um, that is when this the, the, the home that they shared is sold. Um, and that, that's obviously, the according to the prosecution, the absolute final you know, end to the relationship. Um, the, the, you know, the home that they bought and lived in together um, is is sold um, and then on March the 15th we know that um, that Kira disappears yeah. so so that's that's the third um, sort of spike that they that they point to and this was very interesting because this also was the date when Bradley Edwards was meant to turn up for a pre-arranged weekend getaway with friends and he, he didn't turn didn't up, the turn next up day. to the next mm. day so mm. he didn't turn up till um, the Saturday, the fifteenth. Mm. Yeah, that was quite. That was quite. Those witnesses were quite strong in my eyes. They they remembered clearly. Um, well, they were it, pretty angry because they thought they'd come come for dinner and they waited up and waited and waited and waited and waited. And their Friday night was completely yeah. you know spent waiting. And for they him. were sure on dates because yeah. it yeah. coincided with a diagnosis, a, a serious medical diagnosis for one of Mr. Edwards's friends. Um, and the and the, the the trip away was basically a sort of 
uh, you know, a deep breath after that mm. diagnosis. And mm. he asked Mr. Edwards to, you know, come down on the Friday. You know, we'll, 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 we'll have a meal and we'll talk about it. And, you know, it would be nice to have you there as support. And he didn't turn up. He yes. said he was going to be there and he didn't turn up. And then he turned up the next day with, um, you know, and, and Ali's right. They, they, they were they were still quite miffed about it mm. all those years later. Mm. And um, they questioned and him and said, where were you? Where were you? And he said, Mr. Edwards said, I was trying to reconcile with my wife. Yes. Now, this is obviously the, the, the matrimonial home has just been sold. and of, She's having of, a baby to she's another having, man. She's having a baby to another man. And of all Ms. Mr. Edwards' first wife's evidence, she was very sure about this, that after that certain date, basically after she moved out, there was no attempt on either side to reconcile. Um, so, And that was in direct contrast to what Mr. Edwards' alibi was um, for that time or that's what they say he, he was he was doing was creating an alibi the only hint we got of that was when um paul jovich the defense counsel questioned about the actual word you sure it was with my wife it wasn't to do with another relationship or not, something mm-hmm. else and Correct, so yeah. that was the only but they were quite insistent they said yeah. but he was trying to i think say that they were, he was just using that as an ex- saying yes. that to excuse why he hadn't turned up for dinner the night before in fact turned up the next day yes um, but he said he was mainly talking about another relationship. So, now, And know. Tim, of course, you flagged that um, this emotional upset is yet to be decided where this will be considered mm. as, as, you know, in Justice Hall's decision. Correct. So um, the defence have basically objected to this holus bolus. They say it's, it's speculation, it's, it's that the timings are too loose... Um, you know, uh, how can you possibly say that this could be a motive for murder? Um, and the prosecutioners say, well, no, we insist. This, this is our theory and, 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 and we're going to stick to it. And so v- very soon before the trial actually started, the evidence actually started, um, Justice Hall released a judgment basically saying, I'm going to re- reserve my judgment on this. So he's going to let. So he's letting all the evidence mm. in to hear it, but he's only going to decide whether he considers it in terms of his verdict. Basically, right at the end of the prosecution case. Yeah. So he's he's having the judge is having a bobby way. If if, if you <laughs> yes. want, to, he, he's he's saying yeah, okay, I'm going to let you argue it all. I'm going to hear, I'm it. hear mm. it all, and then I'm going to make my decision. Mm. But I'm going to. But he has put a time on that. I'm going to make my decision before the end of the prosecution case, um, because. That is only fair to the defence to know when they mm-hmm. make w- w- uh, an election, which is basically the election of whether Mr. Edwards is, gives evidence or not. If he does give evidence, whether he's have, going to have to um, address everything that his first wife has said, his second wife has said, the lover has said and all that. So, so it's in at the moment, but we don't know if it's in for good. So given that... How will the prosecution now go about proving their case? Well, that's where you, you, all your scientific this experts is come in and you can bet that every scientific expert they put up, the defence will have one to answer. Yeah, yeah. So this, the, I mean, the, we've discussed it, but, uh, mm. uh, and it's, it's clear as, as, as a bell that DNA, forensics and fibres... Um, and and all the issues that surround those uh, is is where the this trial is going and where it's going to stay for many many months, um, because that's that's how the that's the prosecution's sort of trump card I suppose that's that's the well, ace that they've yeah. got is 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 the DNA um, that they say is Mr Edwards's under under Kira's fingernails and also the fibres that are on all all three of the victims. Um, both dead and living, um, that they say prove that they came into contact with Mr. Edwards' car and his his clothing. Um, and of course, the defence, you know, they've been quite strong already, right, in in flagging um, potes- lots of potential problems. I think they're obviously concentrating on that because um, with the last day of hearing, uh, Paul Jovich spent a long time. Um, clarifying the document keeper, mm. the police woman yep. who um, had storage and everything else to do with all the evidence. So I suspect he, he will be concentrating and focusing on that completely because mm. the other stuff has, has been, there's been so many uh, inconsistencies mm. and 
with the witnesses. Yeah. It's... Um, so it's the, I mean, it's the two C words, basically. It's continuity and contamination. They're going to be the two main issues. Continuity is um, where certain exhibits were at a certain time and whether they could have come into contact with, with other anything. exhibits. Yeah. And then contamination is if they did, if there was a possibility that they, they came into contact, were, were those exhibits contaminated? And basically the contamination is DNA. Um, whether the DNA of Mr. Edwards and Akira's fingernails came from when he was murdering her or whether it came from another source mm. and that source we suggest or we think that the defense will suggest was the rape victim because there was dna on her left with her after that attack which was kept in the same lab or the same building anyway the path west building in perth and we think they're going to suggest that somehow cross that contamination dna mm. profile which was there for all those years has somehow come into contact with kira's um, sample fingernails and that's how it got there so listeners this is all what lies ahead when yep. court resumes on uh, the 6th of January after the two-week break over the Christmas period. Just a reminder, we are setting up a page on thewest.com.au for all the exhibits and photos. Uh, and if you haven't seen them yet, you can keep an eye out for those. We'll have them available over the next few days. So that's thewest.com.au. Uh, thanks for joining us for the past few weeks. Thank you to you both for all your hard work and all your hard efforts. And we hope to be back with you, or we will be back with you, uh, when court resumes for Claremont in Conversation. This podcast was hosted by Natalie Bongiolo, produced by Kate Ryan and Alicia Preedy, and recorded in the studios of Seven West Media. Audio files were provided from the archives of the Seven Network and the West Australian. Sign up for daily emails and all the latest on the Claremont trial at thewest.com.au.